Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and the rankings are in for this week. We've had a couple of changes to the top 10 for the men. Uh, not too many changes on the women's side because most of the big names haven't played this week. Let's go have a look at the big names that have played and the results from last week. Starting on the WTA, and we had two tournaments last week. Final tournament on clay at the Poland Open with Garcia, defeating Bogdan in the final 6-4, 6-1, backing up the win against Sviontek earlier in the week. So Garcia, capping off a very good week for her, and she got rewarded in the rankings. And at the Prague Open, we had Buzkova, defeating Potapova 6-love, 6-3, in the first official hardcourt match back since about March, because, of course, we had the clay and grass court season. So Buzkova gets a good start on the hardcourts, and Garcia caps off a very good week. Going over to the men's side now, and again, and the same for them with the last clay court events of the season. Batista Agu won at the Austrian Open against the local Misalich. 6-2, 6-2 to cap off a very good week for RBA. At the Amarg Open, we had a top 10 clash, a next-gen clash, with Sinner defeating Alcaraz, who was the defending champion of the tournament, 6-7, 6-1, 6-1, to lift his first clay court trophy. And at the Atlanta Open, the official start of the US Open Series, Dimonor lifts another trophy in Atlanta, defeating Brooksby in the final 6-3, 6-3. So, as I said, the clay court season is now officially done until next year, and the American hard court season is underway. Let's go have a look at the WTA rankings for this week, because we didn't have any changes to the top 10. Sviontek, despite losing last week, remains number one by a mile. Conservate, she played last week, had a bad result, but again, she stays at number two. Zachary at number three, Badosa at four, Jabur at five, Sabalenka comes in at six, Pagula at seven, Muguruza at eight, Collins at nine, and Raducanu hangs onto that top 10 spot for another week. And most of those names that I just mentioned from Zachary downwards will actually be playing this week. So expect some changes next week to the rankings. Having a look at the race of the finals now. And again, no changes to the top 10 with Sviontek still being the only lady to qualify at the top. Jabur coming in at two. Goff stays at three. Pagula at four. Zachary comes in at number five. Kazakina is at number six. And she's back this week. So we'll see how she looks on the hard courts. Badosa at seven. Bencic at eight, Kudamatova comes in at nine, and Danielle Collins rounds out the top 10 for this week. But as I mentioned, just like with the top 10, the race of the finals will also start to move again because a lot of those players are playing this week in certain tournaments. Having a look at the players that went up in the rankings this week and the two winners from last week. Starting with Garcia, she goes up 13 spots, number 32 in the world. She's had a really good couple of weeks, capping it off with a title and obviously beating Iga Sviontek, the world number one. And Buzkova, she goes up 20 spots, number 46 in the world after winning a title this week. So two ladies that won titles, surprise, surprise, they go up in the rankings. Players that went down in the rankings, we had Rus go down nine spots to 84 in the world and Schmidlova down 32 spots to 110 in the world. So not the big names dropping in the rankings because remember this time last year, we actually had the Olympics. So no points drop off because there was no points given at the Olympics last year. Let's jump over the men's top 10 now. And we did have some changes to the top 10 of the men, starting with Medvedev. He stays at number one, and he's back this week in Mexico to play some tournaments. Zverev stays at two with Rafa coming in at number three. But Carlos Alcaraz, after a very good week, Again last week, getting to the final of Croatia. He's gone up to a career high number four in the world, pushing City Pass down to number five. And City Pass is not playing this week, so expect Alcaraz to hold onto that spot for a little bit longer. And another change with Kasper Ruud dropping down to number seven and making way for Djokovic, who hasn't played since Wimbledon, but he goes up to number six after Ruud lost a lot of points from a tournament last year that he didn't decide to play. So Djokovic goes up despite not playing, and Ruud drops down because he didn't play. Coming in number eight is Andre Rublev. Ojeli Asim comes in at nine, and Yannick Sinner. After winning a tournament last week in Croatia, he stays at number 10, but he closes the gap on those guys above him. Having a look at the race of the finals and no changes to the top 10 here with Rafa staying at number one, very close to qualification. Only needs to get about 300 points to qualify. Alcaraz stays at two, adds to his total with a final last week. City Pass at three, Rude at number four, Zverev at five, Medvedev at six, Rublev at seven, Oje Aliasim at eight, Fritz at number nine, and Novak Djokovic is at number 10 for now. But like I keep saying, Djokovic is not playing over the US Open Series at this stage. So he won't be able to add to his total, whereas everyone below him will be able to add to their totals. And he's not that far ahead of number 11, who's Hubi Hercatch. So expect Djokovic maybe to drop out of this top 10 in a few weeks' time. But no changes this week, despite some of those players playing. Having a look at the players that went up in the rankings that were outside the top 10, Alex Dimonor. He goes up nine spots to number 21 in the world after winning a title in Atlanta. And Dominic Team were on team watch again. He had a good week making a quarterfinal again this week. So he goes up 27 spots, number 172 in the world. Still trying to get that top 100 spot, which will automatically qualify him to play 
at the US Open. So we'll see Team in the next few weeks, see how he looks on the hard court. But a pretty nice little clay court run over the last few weeks. Players that have gone down in the rankings this week, Nick Kyrgios. He's gone down 16 spots, to number 63 in the world after dropping points from the last couple of years on the American hard court scene. So tough break for Kyrgios, who could have been in the top 20 had Wimbledon counted for points. But now he's outside the top 50, which is really strange to see. And Altmaier, he drops down 14 spots to number 79 after dropping points from last year at this time on the clay court. So again, Kyrgios, very, very unlucky that Wimbledon didn't count for much because his ranking is really suffering and he could really have done with that extra 1,200 points. So there you have it. They are the rankings for another week. No real change again. I mean, the last three weeks since Wimbledon haven't had too many changes in the top 10, mainly because most of the players haven't played over that time, and especially on the women's side. Hardly any of them have played on those clay courts that have happened over the last few weeks, but the American season is upon us. We have the US Open Series. No more clay court, no more grass court, only hard court from now. And a big names are playing. But are you shocked about the rankings? I'm shocked at Kyrgios. It's such a shame that he didn't get rewarded for Wimbledon, and he deserves to be in the top 20. He believes he's a top 20 player, just his ranking doesn't show it. And unfortunately, he's going to be unseated for the next few weeks until he gets that ranking boosted, maybe by another big result. But let me know down in the comments below. Are you shocked by any of the rankings this week?